Hey, everybody. Welcome to another awesome episode of Power Hour, starring me, Ron Harris. It's Ron Harris Muscle. And, of course, could not do without this man all the way from across the pond in the United Kingdom. Please welcome Giles Tiger Thomas. How are you, Giles? I'm doing very well, Ron. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Look at the studio. I miss those mm. days. Well, I never made it over there. Someday, I still want to go to Tiger Towers. It's yeah. Well, bucket. this time, what day is it today? Tuesday. Yep. I'm going to have Ronnie sat opposite me next week in the studio. Wow. So I'm very excited about that. Yeah. Wow. So I'm just, I'm just, I mean, obviously, I'm showing off now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that, that's going to be for his channel, Ronnie Coleman? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to get you to, so but I'll probably do like an hour and then literally we've, uh, we're getting picked up and we've got to go to the, the, the second appearance on the tour. So, okay. so we're in three countries in seven days, three countries, seven days. Oof. Yeah. So very excited. Um, UK, Ireland and Slovakia. Wow. So this is, this is, you've done these gym tours before. You did them with, uh, you, Brandon Curry, uh, Phil Heath, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, Angela, Angela, she wins all the shows. What's her name? <laughs> Come Ashley Caldwell. Ashley Caldwell. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is another one, and there's more. In, there's more in store. You talk about those when oh. you're ready at some point in the yeah. future. I'm not. I'm not leaking any news. But uh, you're in the UK, and the Arnold UK is happening in a couple of days over there. This is. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a big show, but we've had we've had a couple dropouts. Uh, I was hoping Hadi Chupan might somehow hang on for another couple of weeks, get over there because I'd love to see him again. See if he can look even better than he did in Ohio. But I look at his Instagram. He's back training in Iran, so I don't think he's coming. Um, so let's start off the top. Uh, actually, no. can, I make, can I make a comment on that, please? Of course. I think that's really bad of Hadi to not do this. If if there is a even if he had a genuine visa problem, he should have sorted that out. He's mm -hmm. an IPP professional. Clues in the name. Um, I see. I mean, people used to complain about Wayne Demilia, but my God, that guy made sure those guys competed once they committed to show. Because yeah. you know, I mean, I can imagine the promoters are pulling their hair out because I would be. If all these names were like dropping out just because he didn't feel like doing it. I mean, if he's actually able to get to the UK, then, and why would you turn down that kind of money? 150K first prize, isn't it, for the, for the Arnold? Yeah. Is that, is that what why, all UK why is saying? For, why is he foregoing that kind of money? I mean, I don't understand. I mean, remember his, um, like I said, his last, last, last episode, one of his, after the 2019 Olympia, one of his friends was outside and you were interviewing Hadi just as he yeah. uh, got, took third at the Olympia. And, um, and one of his guys going, oh, he's been robbed. He should have won it. Do you know how much $400,000 is in Iran? And da, 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 da. So I just think, you know, like he was on the poster a lot. I mean, I looked at the ticket prices because, I mean, obviously, I've always always had press passes. I mean, Ronnie right. sorted me a ticket, but I did actually glance at the ticket prices because all the gold and silver were gone and all the VIP, were like 200 pounds, 400 pounds. And I know it's not just open guys. Like in the days of the British Grand Prix, when you just had 12 Olympia guys up, the ticket's like fifth, fifth row at 55 pounds. Wow. Like, so for, so for anyone, I mean, I'm only really going there. I'm going to walk around the expo and I only really want to see the pro show on Saturday night and yeah. Sunday. And then I'll obviously off with Ronnie on Monday. But um, I just think if these guys commit, they should freaking do it. I just think it's really, really bad of them to be pulling out a show. And why would you not want to go and get an extra win, you know, for that kind of money? I mean, it's not like a $10,000 you know, you, you could understand if he committed and it was like ten or twenty thousand. You think, okay, well, maybe I just want to go shut it down and go get ready for the Olympia. But I think, I think that's that's not cool actually. If he, um, him not him not showing up to this one, I think these guys are just they drop out too easily. So that's my that's my rant number one over with. Yeah, I mean, back in the back in the you mentioned Wayne Demilia, he was a hard ass. You have that phrase over there, mm -hmm. hard ass. When people would drop out of shows, if they didn't have a valid medical uh, a note from a, a very good excuse. They got fined. They got suspended. Yeah, I, mean, I haven't seen anybody fined or suspended for anything in the past decade or so. But I remember back in the day, they were getting hit left and right. Says Lee Priest, suspended, fine, suspended, fine. Um, I, I, I honestly, I I would go as far. I would sue these guys. Oof, wow. I would seriously. If Hadi Shupan's on the poster and that's like it's false advertising, that's selling tickets. The promoter is expecting him to come. Mm. Now it looks bad on the promoter if if Hadi doesn't get up there and everyone's like, hang on, I paid 200, 200, 400, 400 pounds for these tickets and these, these VIP. Uh, the main reason is because I wanted to see Hadi Shupan. You know, we wanted to see round two between Hadi and Samson. Yeah. So if these guys don't do that, I think that's really, I think that's not cool, man. Not cool. Yeah, you make a good point because, you know, even in looking at the website now, I see Hadi still on there on their website, and I still I see Rubiel Mosquera and Nexilla still on there, and I don't yeah. know. You know, we know as we we're in the loop. We know that they're not coming. You know, most people who really follow the sport know that Nexilla dropped out a couple like six weeks ago, eight weeks ago. Yeah. Or maybe some yeah. there's casual people that might show up going, "Where's Hadi? Where's Where's Nexilla?" You know, and they maybe well. 
they're a main, they're a big draw. They're a big draw, you know? So, um, I don't know. And also, I think, um, I mean, I've said this about the Arnold a few times. I think they need to invite more guys because, you know, look look what happened last year. If they hadn't bumped up the prize money, we would have had no Nick Walker, um, no Andrew Jack, you know, no Rami. And it went from being a really weak lineup to a really good lineup because they bumped up the prize money because they didn't have enough guys up there. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I, I don't want to see. I mean, this is, I mean, I'm looking forward to the Arnold, but there's going to be what, seven guys in the open? I'd like to see double that. I think they need to extend, like, this is, like, remember the, the reason they got rid of the 212 in 2018 when Kamal won it? There yeah. was only, what, was it seven guys that year? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and they said they, they said they were cancelling the 212 because they said they didn't have the support from the athletes. Well, just invite more guys. Mm. I, I'm counting, you know? six, I'm only counting six guys. And hang on, hang on. And also with that 212 back in the day, like if they, um, because obviously with, um, with with Kamal being an unknown at the time, you know, yeah. they need to extend it to not just the big name, not just the top five Olympia guy, because you get then a, someone like a Kamal coming in and potentially winning it and adding a lot of excitement to the show. I agree. I'm going to look this up because I'm going to feel really bad if I miss like one guy out of seven, but I might do it anyway. But let, let's get into it. We got we got to preview this show because if Hani had decided to go or was going if if hottie was showing up um it would be a foregone conclusion in my mind he's going to win again yes. samson would be lucky to get second if somebody shows up looking phenomenal and he looked worse but as it stands now uh we did have a little bit of a, a drama the day after the arnold where samson we didn't know if he was going to make it to this show in the uk he wasn't feeling well he made a post saying his body was shutting down he was going to the emergency room and then i think it was only uh, a space of about 24 hours or less. Yes, 24 made, hours. 24 hours he made, he got back on Instagram and YouTube and let everyone know, I'm feeling better. Uh, I'm definitely in the UK show. I'm not going to let down uh, all my fans there. I have friends and family that haven't seen me compete in years. They've already bought tickets. I'm doing this. Don't worry about it. So, uh, what did so I say on the YouTube comments on Power Hour last week? I said, as soon as he put that first video out, I said, guys, relax. He's doing it. Give it two <laughs> or three days. Yeah. He let, back in his routine, back in his, you know, because you think about it, right? He was competing on the, well, the Friday and the Saturday. Then he was traveling back on the Sunday. Yeah. And then, obviously, he was at the Expo as well. And, I mean, the huge queues. I mean, that's a pretty intense few days, as well as going to Pittsburgh and all, and all the other things he has to do with the sponsor hostile. Yeah. You know, I knew full well. I've seen it happen before where I thought I thought it would probably be two or three days minimum before he went, okay, I'm feeling a lot better now because, you know, slept on your own bed and he's fine. But the very next day, I think that was I think that was a mistake. I think you should have left it a couple of days because for me, it looks like it, it looks like bullshit. It does. I mean, does it look like he figured out Hottie wasn't coming and now I'll do it? But I, I can't imagine he was ever really planning on pulling out of the UK show because that's you know he's the best. He's the top bodybuilder in the United Kingdom. Yeah. A lot. Of, I'm sure there's a lot of people who are buying tickets who are already bought tickets specifically to see Samson Dowda. Precisely. So yeah, imagine if we didn't have Hadi and Samson in the yeah. show. Can you imagine what would happen? I mean, it just would have been. I can imagine Arnold saying, "Right, okay, then I'm just going to get rid of Open and just go, just going to pump pump money into the classic and yeah. you know, and and um, and f them off, you know." Right. Because yeah, they. That's why. That's what happened with two twelve. They felt they weren't getting enough top athletes entering, so they said, "Well, why bother if if these guys don't care enough?" You know, some of the two twelve guys are going to argue that that was BS, but that was the mm -hmm. line that we heard that they weren't really supporting the show with the, the top names were skipping it just to focus on the Olympia. And yeah, if Samson was not there, what are we left with? There's I just, I mean, I think, I think Samson, I th honestly, I mean, I, some people have been asking me, is it, why is Samson even doing the Arnold? I mean, obviously it's big prize money and it was obviously for both shows. So it's probably, but I think um, like you, you think about it, I'm, like I said, I was with him in, in Prague and I, to be honest at the after party, he looked so exhausted and he had, I think he said he had two weeks off before he started his Arnold prep. And I'm like, and you know, remember what Ronnie used to say, you know, you can only really peak once. I don't think, I don't think Samson's lazy or he's che necessarily cheating on his diet or isn't prepping hard enough. Yeah. I just think you can only, I mean, I remember at the, um, the after party 2022 Olympia, I was sat with Milos, Marlena and Samson yep. and Samson went, uh, me, sorry, Milos went to get some food and I said, Samson, I said, you can do, do the Arnold, mate. And he went, oh yeah, 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 we're doing it. We're doing it. I said, oh, fantastic. I said, you've barely come off stage after coming sick at Olympia. <laughs> So anyway, and then he um, and then Milos comes back and I said, Milos, I said, Samson's got something to tell you. And Samson says, uh, we're, we're doing the Arnold, right? And Milos went, I hoped you'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> and that was obviously the year he won it. The thing is, you know, I mean, 
the human body isn't a machine. Do you know what I mean? You can't. I mean, I think I think he really did put everything in his heart and soul into that prep. And for me, like if you look at the Gilco Productions footage, I mean, he, the condition really wasn't good enough. And I mean, and you can't necessarily. I was speaking to another uh, very very top coach yesterday about this. He said, to be honest, Charles, he said, he said Sam, because I said Samson's. Uh, I've heard Samson saying that that was. He was saying that that was his best ever condition, and it really wasn't. I mean, that was probably comparable. I mean, what, what would you? How would you compare this Arnold condition to when he took sixth at the Olympia? Which do you think was better? Do you think it was comparable, better, or worse? What do you think? I think his condition was better back then. He was smaller. He's definitely much bigger and rounder and fuller now. Yeah. Than the first Olympia, um, best condition. I think he looked better. At you know, it's different lighting and everything, but I think he looked better at those fall shows. Uh, Romania, Prague, than he did I, here. I know, but specifically, what do you think? Because that was that was the 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 first Olympia when he obviously Milos wanted to bring him in nice and full, but you know the condition wasn't the because they wanted to get next to Rami and all that. Yeah. But like for me, like that's a step. But so a point is there's those shows in between where he won the Arnold and then he did the Olympia and the post Olympia shows. All those conditions, apart from Romania, I didn't really like his Romania look. Um, they were all better. Mm. They were all better. So for me, he's, his physique's taken a level up, but I feel like his conditioning's taken a step back. And I saw on his stories yesterday, someone asked a question, will your conditioning be better at the Arnold UK or something? And he got really snippy with them. Mm. He was like, come on, you've got really he's sarcastic. And I, I read that as not someone that's, you know, being a brat or he's being arrogant or anything. I just thought he just looks tired because mm. I think he's really, really trying his hardest. But I feel like the body just might not be playing ball. Do you know what I mean? Oh, true, so true. that's why, that's why I just, I, I really, really, uh, because thing is, let's face it, there's levels to this. And there's levels that he's gone up in the last few years. He went into, when we got top six Olympia, he went to top 10. Then he went the Arnold. Then he got third at the Olympia. And every single time he's basically gone up, see if there's five levels, he's gone up four levels in the last two years. Yeah. Now the next level, the next step up is to win the Olympia. Right. And that's, and that's, that means you've got to get past Hadi. You've got to get past Derek. You got to get past a returning Nick Walker, and you know I'm not a big fan of Nick Walker's physique or his attitude. But I mean, the kid is the kid is fierce. Yeah. The kid is fierce. Yeah. So he's he's got to get past him. You've got Rubiel. You've got Andrew Jacked after a rest coming back. You know you can't you can't just assume you're going to hold your position, let alone uh, you know basically beat it. But there's things that I think he needs to do to his physique, his conditioning. He needs to stop that in the side shoulders. And he needs to watch the abs. And I'm telling you, like I said, I put that picture of Wesley on um, yeah. on the on the group chat. You're yeah. telling me like Samson in that condition wouldn't be a five time Mr. Olympia. I mean, they, I mean, I'm sorry, but I, in my personal opinion, there's nobody on the planet that could stop a truly, truly peeled Samson. But I think the competing so frequently. Um, I think if we take a leaf out of Ronnie Coleman's book, you know, if you really just, I mean, imagine uh, Samson in '98 Ronnie Olympia condition. I mean, no one is touching him. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, rant over. No, yeah, so that also I begs. Do. I mean, it begs the question: Can he look? Can he look any better than he did in Columbus? Sometimes yeah. when people get well, sometimes when people get sick and they don't eat for a couple of days, miraculously their conditioning gets. They lose a little bit of muscle, but they they tighten up because they weren't. True. Some True. of these people eat more. You know, they eat more than they should be eating or need to be eating. Uh, I've seen people tighten up after getting sick. They they yeah. tend to look yeah. a little flatter. Mm -hmm. But I would take ten percent less. Fullness from Samson for another 15, 20% more condition. Anyway, I, I, I know exactly what you're saying, but that's what happened in Romania. And for me, he lost a lot of his impressiveness. That's why I think, like, I've been really hard on Milos recently, and a lot of people have been absolutely panning him. But you know what? Sometimes some people's bodies, you know, they're, they're trickier to work with. I remember when Neil Hill was working with Zach Khan, and he said, Charles, he says, Zach's body just defies the laws of you know, <laughs> physics or whatever. And he says, he says, he said you can put food into him and he goes flat, and it's like he said it's like the actual the rules of the what normally works ninety nine times out of hundred doesn't apply to some. You know, some of these guys are so tricky to peak. Wow. And I think and I think with um like like in Romania for me, Samson lost that fullness, and he just didn't look anywhere near as impressive. So I think mm -hmm. that's why Satnai Milos sometimes maybe pushed the fullness because he knew that that was a more impressive version. But like I said, I think he's still trying to figure his body out. But I don't think the competing. Um, so frequently is really, really helping him right now. Because um, I think we all just assumed he was going to keep going up and up and up and beat Hadi. Because if he'd have beat Hadi, then obviously he would have been in pole position for the Olympia. Then he just has to get past Derek, theoretically, um, let alone all the other guys as well. But um, I just think um, if he really, really is serious about winning the Olympia, 
um, then he really needs to just focus on that one show because um, I, I think he's done too much in the last couple of years. And I know he's been, he's kind of enthusiastic and he's, but I think I feel like every time I've seen or spoken to him, he, or, or looked at some of his videos, he just looks absolutely worn out. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, Dan Sullivan, uh, Dan Sullivan puts up a, like a counter six months, 12 days. On, every day there's like a post with the uh, countdown the Olympia. So let's say he has a little over six months between now and the Olympia. Mm. We're in the middle of March. After this show, he's already said, I'm going on vacation. I'm shutting it down. Like you said, you know, you recommended, I think, in a post, don't touch a weight, don't do yeah. no gear, nothing. Just let your body completely rest for a solid month. Mm -hmm. Come back, ease back into a little bit of an off season. Doesn't need much. Um, go back to the Olympia prep. I think there's enough time between now and then. I know yeah. peaking twice a year can be can be treacherous, but I think he can pull this off. I mean, I know, I mean, like, like, I, like I said, my memory, if my memory serves right, he did say after in, in Prague, he said, I've got two weeks off. Now, the thing is, two weeks off, even like just the training, I mean, that's not enough. You can't go straight into another prep, you know, because the thing is, that's, that's not, I mean, I know he's not, he's not known to, well, I've heard rumors that he's not a big gear user and all that, and he's not pushing the dosages and pushing the compounds and stuff like that. But still, you still need more than two weeks off if you want your body to really play ball in 12 weeks because you know with Samson he's so hungry he's so fierce he wants to come because I think his physique was better his physique like his calves and there was different things going on in his physique he definitely made improvements to his physique but his conditioning no because that means that tells me that he's he's obviously not afraid of the hard work but sometimes you can do everything I mean, I mean I've done you know I've done sort of different things with shows and then I've done the second I've done the same thing second two or three times in a row and it just, just goes horribly wrong, where the first time it worked perfectly well because you're doing four shows in a row. Yeah. So um, I would just love to see him really shut it down, go to Mauritius, sit on the beach, get off his phone, pre-program all his, all his social media posts, get them all loaded up, yeah. and, then, and then just go all out for the Olympia. And no more post-Olympia shows just to win $10,000. What was the point of that? Well, what's, is Dubai a post-Olympia show? Oh, of course. Well, no, it's 100,000, so he probably yeah, is going to go for that, that one. one. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a good point, yeah. Props to them. I mean, that's that's for them to step up and, and come up with another six-figure yeah. pri first prize. Good good move. And it, it's a shame because that, that news kind of got overshadowed with all the Arnold Classic stuff. But that's yeah. big news. I mean, the fact that they're pumping that kind of po uh, prize money into it, you know, fair play to Beda, Beda Badai for doing that. I mean, that's a, that's a huge, huge, huge deal. And aren't they um, paying out 70 for Classic, too? And, oh yeah, okay, wow. Is it sixty or seventy? I think it's up there. It's, it's also, can I can I put something out there? Yeah, of course. I've I've got a funny feeling we might be seeing Rami back at the Olympia this year. I hope so. I hope so. Mm. Yeah. Apparently, the words were he's upset and pissed off. <laughs> and the thing cool. is, you know, that's a really that, I know that's not great for him in his emotional state, but usually that nine times out of ten with these top top best athletes, that's usually a good sign that they're going to come in absolutely all guns blazing. So, um, I mean, imagine if he comes back and the arms are fixed and everything and he's had the time off and, you know, maybe he's carried on with the stem cell. I don't know because he's kind of gone dark now. Isn't it? It's kind of like Rami's kind of old news. But I think that when someone's been at the top, you know, um, he's only 30, still only 39. So um, theoretically, if he's had a good rest and his body's responded and he's hungry and he's got it here. Oh, bloody hell, watch out. Imagine if he won the Olympia again this year. Imagine that. Well, well, I've heard he just wants to really beat Samson. <laughs> I think I think it's a hype thing. I think it's a hype thing because he knows that Samson's the new, like the new flavor of the month, you know. So he's probably he's probably thinking, well, I've been all these guys before, but I want to really want to, I really want to, you know, it's like a gauge for him because I think maybe he knows he might not potentially win the Olympia again, maybe. Yeah. But he's probably you know, like some, I've you know, sometimes you set yourself a target of someone you want to be or you know, some you know, you see it in the pros all the time. Well, I know you're six foot tall. You don't want to see these short guys keep winning the Olympia. I know that. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, yeah, I just, uh, yeah, just the whole, the whole hype thing is, um, is, is, it's always, uh, just, yeah, I suppose, yeah, right, well, yeah I'd like, I, I would, I mean, I would love, to, I mean, who wouldn't love to see someone like a Samson, like basically, he, I mean, he, 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 Sean Roden won the Olympia at two thirty eight, you know, and he, he was it five, Sean Roden was at five nine, five nine, five ten, yeah. So you had ten pounds an inch. Samson six foot. So you're talking like, I mean, really. In really, really top condition, that's like Sean Roder with another 30 pounds. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? And who would not want to see that as a Mr. Olympia? Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, Sean, if Sean had been even had the same exact proportions and conditions and shape, but was even a little bigger and fuller, wow. That could have kept winning the Olympia for a while, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably would have won two or three. I think so. Well, let's move on to I'm going to read three names to you, and you pick the one you want to talk about next. Who do you think is most likely to be second place, assuming Samson can win? 
Would it be Jonathan De La Rosa, Akim Williams, or James Hollingshead, and why? Uh, John. John, okay. John, because I think he's coming in hot after the other Classic. I think he's got his confidence back. He's got the muscle back. He's got that thickness back. Um, but you know what I will say? I Like I said on last episode, I really, really didn't pay enough attention to Akeem Williams. And I think and I think that was wrong with me yeah. because I've been looking now at all the footage and all the height. And I because I kind of wrote him off. I said, OK, he's seventh place P- purely based upon, you know, the, the back and um, and the fact that he was he wasn't really in contention for the top six, the way they were moving around. Um, uh, who was uh, Antoine and who was the other one? My mind's gone blank. Um, Raphael, we had Hollingshead, we had uh, oh, Hollingshead, Hollingshead yeah. and and uh, and Antoine. I thought, okay, they're battling it for fifth year with yeah. Akim on the seventh, and then everyone's been saying, like, oh god, he on the second day, he looks so much better. And I've had a look at the pictures and the videos, and he they were right, actually. Yeah. I, I, I missed that one because I was paying too much attention to the other guys, yeah. But um, I think, um, I think second will be between De La Rosa. And Akeem, because I've got a feeling Akeem's got his he's got his fire back now. And I think he's got a bit of confidence back after doing, you know, after after such a good showing at the Arnold. Also the fact that he did make that drastic improvement from Friday to Saturday. That's what I mean, yeah. yeah. Nobody else did that. Nobody. True, true. We um, expected Samson to do that, but he didn't. Right. So and it was his first prep with Chris Aceto. So right. oh, wow. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking maybe they figured some things out that weekend in Columbus that they're applying now for this. This peaking process that could, yeah, I mean, I would not be surprised. I'm guilty too. I didn't really have Akeem in the top five. I was like, yeah, Akeem's good. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I, he's, I he's, he's, he's kind of he shocked me a little bit. I think him and Raphael for me were the shocks of the show. Right. Yeah. So Akeem definitely has that possibility. And Jonathan, I, I honest, now that I'm looking at the pictures and the videos, I this might this is the best Jonathan I've ever seen. Yeah. So he's, about, he's been around a while. He's been around a while, you know. He's been a pro I, for I think he's, 13 years, 12, 13 years. Yeah. I mean, we knew last year when he took second to uh, Justin Shire and Hunter, I knew that like, that wasn't, that was him kind of like with, he did, like I said, like I said last episode, he needed another kind of six months heavy hard training after the bicep tear to kind of get that. And he got it back at the Arnold. Him and Patrick seemed to be really gelling and work, working really well together. So I was really, um, I was happy to see John actually kind of get like, he's, he's kind of, Entering a new wave of his career, you know, yeah. so it's good. But I think he's going to be uh, blip, blip, coming in hot. Yeah, I mean, his <laughs> conditioning and separation look better than I've seen it maybe ever, and that that was always my knock on him. I love yeah. that. I love his physique. I think he's got an amazing physique. But you know, we're nitpicky. We look for certain things that could be better, and he did. He's he's improved those. Him and uh, would, and Patrick. Would you say at the best rare double in the show? <sighs> That's tough. I, I like Raphael's too. Mm-hmm. Uh, he looked great. Uh, Hadi's rear double was pretty damn great. Finally. Yeah. Finally. His, yeah. You know what? That's why I think Hadi might just win the Olympia again this year. Because for me, that was that was my critique of him last year when he lost the Olympia. I thought, like, okay, I think he will. I thought actually Hadi was going to win. But I felt like the the rear shot, even his rear lapse was a little bit squishy. It wasn't as crisp. Yeah. But now, at the Arnold Classic on the finals, I was like, holy shit. I've never seen. Because that was his one weakness. His one weak pose was that rear double bicep. And now it's all crisp and separated, and uh, I think and, and you, you know he's going to be bringing that against Olympia. Absolutely, he sorted it, as you like to say. Um, the the strange, one of the strangest posts, James Hollings said I want to talk about because he made a post the other day talking about how he's really uncoachable. Which how, who many people actually will admit that? But it was kind of bizarre. It was during his Instagram live. Someone said, "You still work with Milos?" So first he said, "Milos is a legend." Then he said, "This prep, I made all the calls and just wanted to have a couple people." I trust in my corner to bounce off him and trained by JP, Jordan Peters. Honestly, prepped in a way that means I'm not coachable. I have too many strong opinions on what I feel needs to be done and done immediately based off what I see. I value my friends in my eyes, but I ultimately have to make the call. And that's what I did with this prep. So, uh, but all that being said, he looked pretty damn great. This was close to the best James I've ever seen. Yeah, it looked great. He's worked with several coaches. So maybe he doesn't need a coach. Maybe he is his best coach himself. I, I think coaches need to start dropping athletes because I think, I mean, fair enough for James to say that. And obviously, you know, I don't, I've got no reason to disbelieve him. Mm. But like, I, if I was Milos, I wouldn't be happy with, with an athlete saying that because I just think, come on, mate. You know, it's like, I've, you know, I've been promoting you and then prepping you. And, and he, are you listening to what I'm telling you to do? Or are you taking it on board? You know, because if you'd have gone horribly wrong, yep. Milos would, that would have looked bad on Milos. Sure. Do you know what I mean? So he kind of looked, he, he looked good. I mean, he, he claimed he was only 85%. 
Mm. And that annoys me as well, actually, when athletes say that. They come to like the big shows and they go, oh, it's only 85%, 90%. It's like, well, why would you set yourself up for failure? Why would you why would you not want to bring your 100%? So the thing is now the expectation is on him this weekend yeah. to bring 95 or 100%. So I, I, I sometimes don't know why they say stuff like that because nine times out of 10, it usually backfires. Yeah. But um, but James, um, yeah, he's, he looks very very good. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. He's, um, but like I said, don't I, don't don't say stuff like that because it's um, you know um, it's I don't think it's good personal. So maybe it's a matter of I don't think he planned to to be eighty five percent there and one hundred percent in the UK or ninety five or whatever. But if that's how it ends up playing out, if he ends up looking better at the UK show, and let's say he's pushing Samson for the win. I mean, it's, it's, that would set him up uh, if, and he ends up placing second, let's say. Let's just be theoretical here. I think that really that brings his stock up. It shows that he's able to improve. He knows what he needs to do, and he's learning his body better. And, well, and it's, it's his hometown. It's his home country, I should say. Well, if, if Samson, like based upon that first video he put out and there was his body was shutting down, he needs to go to hospital, things are going wrong, I'm sick. If, if there was any truth in that, then potentially we might be seeing a word First, Samson, this weekend, we might be mm. seeing a better, I guess there's a lot of ifs and buts. We might be seeing a better James Holland's head. I still don't know whether that's enough for him to beat a Samson. Samson would have to be seriously off for James to come close. You know, because I mean, wow. funny that their first pro show in 2018, both their first pro show, 2018 Prague, uh, James was fourth and Samson was fifth. Because it's funny because the year before I said, I'd, um, you know, maybe Samson's not not ready, not pro worthy yet. And then he goes and gets top five in his first pro, a good pro <laughs> show, you know, against Nathan Diasha, yeah. Rooney Winkler and um, uh, Lucas Asladdle and stuff like that. So, yeah, Samson's constantly proved me wrong uh, over the last few years. I mean, I wrote about it in that, that MD article I wrote a few, uh, few months ago. But, um, yeah, um, yeah, I, I don't know whether James can beat Samson. I don't know whether that's going to mm. happen. Like I said, James, Samson would have to be seriously off. Yeah, I mean, it's a structure thing. James, James. Is a very hardworking guy. He's mm -hmm. made the most out of his genetics and his structure, I think. Uh, but Samson is just gifted on another level that even most pros could never dream of. But then again, if you kind of like and say, okay, if you say this is like a modern day Dorian versus Flex Wheeler, Branch Warren versus Victor Martinez, because that's their style of physiques. You know, James Holland is kind of like the, right. the, the Branch Dorian kind of style physique, big, thick, heavy, dense, grainy. And then you've got like the the prettier, but also bloody huge, you know, Samson down. That's why Samson's so impressive because he's big and he's shapely and he's got right. aesthetics, you know? It's just that one thing he's missing, the conditioning. Um, you know, it's just sad. So, but we'll see. We'll see what happens in this weekend and also at the Olympia. So Antoine coming back. Antoine should look really good again. Uh, I was impressed with him. His pose, yeah, he, I thought he, no, no disrespect to Samson, but I would have given best poser Antoine. I thought it was a fantastic presentation. Got the crowd really going as he always does, uh, and you know it's good person. Needs needs more chest, needs a little more back thickness, but still a really nice physique. And I wish him the best. Mohamed yep. Shaban in the show too. I, am I missing somebody? Because that's only six guys. I feel like you're missing one. Hang on. Yeah. I'm just thinking. Not Hadi. <laughs> Hadi should be doing this, man. Come yeah. on, what's he playing at? I mean, I just I I smell bullshit with this visa thing. I really do. Yeah. Should, oh, also, um, also, yeah, I'll tell you how you have forgotten horse. Oh, well, why, horse. Why, why is, is horse not doing this show? I believe he's on the poster too. He's mm -hmm. on the poster and he should be doing this. This is wrong. This is wrong. Two weeks ago, because I saw a poster with him and Milos, yeah. and Milos said, uh, okay, he's, he's getting the next show we'd be doing is the, he's not until 2025. And I'm like, you're down on the poster to do the old UK. Bloody do it. And the thing is, like, all he had to do was get a bit tighter. Now, he could have gone off and really, really suffered for two weeks, zero carbs, and jumped on that treadmill and dropped 10 pounds and come in looking sensational for this and probably got a top five. Because in the run-up and the lead-up, like you and I, we had we had a horse around fourth, fifth. You know, we've, if he'd have really nailed it, but he didn't. But it wasn't like he was – two weeks, he could have done a lot in two weeks, enough probably mm -hmm. to really jump up, you know, because the Arnold Ohio was it's kind of a failure for him, really, because he was, what, second from last or last? Yeah, yeah, he was second to last. Yeah, he, yeah, so yeah, second to last. He was ninth out of ten, you know. So why didn't why didn't he just go, okay, I'm gonna go and really knuckle down now? He's a new pro, he needs to get his face out there. He would have jumped over guys that were arguably not as good as him physique-wise. So I think um I think again that's a bit naughty of him not doing this. Um the other guy I really wish was in the show was Rafael Berndale. <gasps> oh I mean yeah. he could have pushed if Samson was off yeah. 
off his Ohio condition, if slid yeah. worse than that, and Rafael was as good as he was in, in Ohio or better, theoretically, I could see Rafael beating him. Just, you know. I do. I do. Yeah, I could. I could have seen that happening. When I spoke to Neil back and forth, he was speaking quite a lot the last couple of weeks. We've reconnected recently. And, um, and I said, why isn't he doing the old UK when he gives it his start? He says, we've got some, there's some family, private family issues he's, um, he's kind of concerned about. And, and to be yeah. honest, they just, they want to get a qualification. And I think he knows that with Hadi or Samson in the show, there's more potential. And obviously it's Brazil, the Brazilian fans and stuff want to see Rafi. It's better for him, for Rafael to be at his best at a show in Brazil, which will then get him a qualification. Then he can shut it down until the Olympia for all his fans to see him. All his family can be there. You know, what was the really benefit of coming over and, you know, at, at the time, possibly coming third, you know? And then because he, he wanted to kick, because Neil's words were, I want to keep him fresh for the Arnold Brazil. Hmm. So, um, I mean, yes, he could have done this show after show. I mean, Neil probably would have made him do it, you know what I mean? <laughs> if he'd have been coaching him. But um, hmm. I, think, I think this was a this was a shrewd move. And um, as, as far as the Arnold Brazil goes, I don't see anyone touching Rafael because for oh. me, what he's done this year, the improvements he's made since coming 10th at the 2022 Olympia, to now is, it's like I said, for me, he was probably the biggest surprise of the show. He was. Uh, I want to move to classic. And another guy that should have done this show, I want, to, I want to say something about Ramon Dino. Ramon, we had, you know, we were criticizing him saying he was off, which he was. He didn't look anywhere near as good as he did. He was flatter. The stage presence was down. And people were oh, yeah. really roasting me in some comments saying, mm -hmm. you don't know what he was going through. And I said, no, I don't know what he was going through. It doesn't matter. You know, it, it's unfortunate, but in sports and competition, it doesn't matter what you're going through. All that really matters is what's on stage. 100%. And he could be going through all kinds of stuff. I have no idea. Relationship problems, sick family members. Who knows what's going on in his life? I have no idea. All I'm going off is what I'm seeing on stage and what I know he's capable of. And he was by far the favorite. We were not talking about anyone else for that win. It was a foregone conclusion. It was like if Ronnie at his best was coming to Olympia, it's like, well, it's Ronnie and everybody else. This was going to be Ramon. And everyone else in classic. Yeah. Um, and I, I think whatever was going on physically with him could have been could have been improved on quite a bit in two weeks' time because condition was there. It's not like he was holding there was no there was very little body fat. It wasn't like he didn't he didn't prep properly, even though it was a short prep from what I hear, but he could have filled out. I would have loved to see the rematch against Wesley. Wesley so doing he, it. So he's not doing it. Uh he's on the poster, but I do not believe he's doing it. Oh, see, here we go again. Here we go again. What does he just want? Is he frightened of getting beat? If you're committed to a show, then That's freaking do the show. Or say to them, please don't put me on the poster. I'm not, I'm, I just want to do this one show. Because I'm guessing, I'm, I'm, am, I, am I wrong in, in assuming that if he'd have won the Arnold America, he'd be doing the Arnold UK? So the reason that, he got, that he's not doing this one is because he got second, correct? Yeah, I'm trying to say, Come on, unfortunately, all the posters are in Portuguese. It's hard for me to see what's going on here. But uh, I hope he is doing it. Um, I hope so. I hope so as well, because he, you know, so. he needs to commit. And like I said, I mean, like I, I, this is why I could never be a coach and I could never manage these guys because they would end up, I'd be, I'd be so tough on them. I'd be, I'd be like Wayne Demilio. I'd be like, say, well, okay, then, well, you know, you know, I, if I had that kind of power, I, I would be, ex I would be, you know, exercising that power. I would, because mm -hmm. I think these guys need to compete. And the thing is they're professional athletes. And what, what do they do? Like two shows a year? How long are they on stage for? 45 minutes at a time? Yeah, and I don't care if you, I don't care if you're bloody, like I said, your pet hamster died or there's something, a lot of people have, all, most people have some shit going on in their lives. But, you know, when it comes to like, if you're out there, you know, you've got to come out on the stage. Remember Phil Heath and bloody Jay Cutler and Ronnie and, you know, if they had a bad day or a bad week or something even terrible was going on in their lives, you know, I bet they just would have just sucked it up and just focused. Do you know what I mean? I mean, come on. I mean, yeah. God, I was, I was bloody, uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry, go on. Sorry. No, I'm it's, reading his. Triggers me this shit. He's got a long post. It's translated. I'm trying to. I'm, I can't figure out from this whether he's doing it or not doing it. Um, probably not. Then. Probably not. I've been That's through a, a lot. That is a shame. And things you're letting the fans down as well, and the promoters, and and you're letting Arnold down, and everyone else. So I just, I just think, come on, just suck it up. Get things. Don't they? Don't they book flights and and make arrangements, and they just go, no, nope, I'm not doing it because they didn't win the show. It's like, come on. And like you said, you could have improved a lot in two weeks and, and potentially turned the tables on on Wesley, and you know. Yeah. So Wesley, but so, well, Wesley's definitely in. We know this. Yep. He's, I think he's already over there. I mean, yep. Birmingham. So there's your winner again, Wesley Visser, as far as I'm concerned. He I'm, was he was never in the conversation to win the Olympia, really, except by his diehard fans. Now we're starting to see a lot of posts putting him and Seabom pictures back, side by yeah, side. Comparing yeah. him. They, they compare pretty well in a few poses. I, I still give the edge to, to Bumstead. 
but yeah. Wesley's not being overpowered or blown away by Bumstead. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I, I, those, those photos he posted this morning, I, I put on the, on the group chat this morning. I mean, you know, they they're not filtered. That is real. That's that's you know, and also like, can you just imagine if that that conditioning was on some of the open guys? Do you know what Ooh. I mean? That level of separation and detail and graininess and hardness, and and also like at the arm, he looks so full. But he looked like he like like I, I can't explain it. It was like he just got okay. He's peaked for this perfectly, right. and I think he's coming in even drier for this. So wow. um, I feel the thing is, you know what, you know what it's like. Once these guys get a big win, it gives them a huge boost of confidence. So you know that Wesley's not coming in this like he's not cruising in this one, thinking he's going to win this easy because he knows he potentially might have to go up against Ramon and Urs and you know Michael DeBull, You know he's won it twice the Arnold UK and you know like serious serious players. You know like top five Olympia guys. You know so yeah. um, top six Olympia guys. So um, yeah, he's not he's not counting his chickens, and he's he's coming in fully prepared for this. But I think it'd be better than the Arnold Marathon. Wow, I mean that's that's by far the best Wesley I've ever seen. So if he's better than that, that puts him in a great spot. I mean, I put money on it. I mean, he would have to. Ramon would really have to come in you know, amazing at this Olympia to beat him with the momentum he's got, and if if he keeps improving. Um, do you um do you honestly think I mean apart from these Arnold Classic hype and all the you know the winning and beating and a you know like a Ramon and Urs and Brion, do you actually see what because I I personally I cannot see Bumstead going on after six. I think he's going to win this one. He's got the baby. He's got all his money, all his businesses and stuff. I mean, there's no real benefit for him winning seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, he said he wanted to be done by the time he's thirty, whatever he was, and and uh, also you know the health and stuff like that. And the end of the day, he's tore his hamstring, his bloody bicep, his his quad. You know, his lat. You know, how many other? Th- I mean, really, it's only a peck, really, before. Do you right. see him pressing the 150s? Like, there were nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's strong, <laughs> Bumstead, isn't he? He's a strong He's motherfucker, man. He was squatting 700 pounds when he was, like, 20 years old. I don't know how many he, I, that. I was shot. I was like, I, I zoomed in on it. There was 150, because he got them up himself. Like, they were nothing. I mean, I was like, holy shit. That's, like, that's serious strong. And he doesn't look, he doesn't go up to, like, 300 pounds in the off-season. He kind of just looks like the same size, just a bit softer. Probably just comes off gear and just he does, know. he does, yeah. Yeah, so he's smart, yeah, because obviously it's classic, so you can't get too big and heavy because you only it's only got to come off then when you when you get ready. It's yeah. a different approach, it's probably a, a much more sensible approach, really, the classic bodybuilding way. Um, so for yeah, he's strong, man. But um, I think after six, I think he's gonna retire. So my question is, do you see Wesley as the next in line? Um, unless unless Ramon can improve. Uh, I haven't seen Ramon improve on the areas that I wanted to see very much in the past couple of years. I want to see that that back thickness come up. It's not, it hasn't really changed. You know, we say arms can never be too big. He's a guy that his arms are actually so big that they take away from, from his chest and his back in a lot of poses. And this is supposed to be about, you know, perfect proportions. Classic is all about yeah. beautiful harmony of the physique. Uh, unless he can bring that back up, you know, and he could, he's a young guy. And if he can get past whatever he's going through right now, which we have no idea, but if he can focus 100%, like imagine if we could throw him in Kuwait for six for the next uh, six months or something, mm. somewhere where it was just a uh, camp, where it was just eat, sleep, train, repeat, eat, sleep, train, pose, bodybuilding 24-7, blinders on. Uh, I still think physically he has the potential, but Wesley right now, he's looking better and better than mm. he's just beat. He just jumped ahead of Earth. He jumped ahead yeah, of Brion. Yeah. And we, we, none of us saw that one coming, did we? No. It, until, but, until they walked on stage. Until they walked yeah. on stage. We were like, because I said on the on the live, the live watch part, I was like, how am I was just drawn to Wesley? Nobody else. I couldn't believe what I, and I was like, is it just because I, you know, because I'm a fan of all of them. Do you know what I mean? I was like, why am I nice just drawn to him? Because he looked the best. Yeah. And I mean, the only guy that's that's a, a real legit top five threat, aside from Bumps that he hasn't beaten yet, is Terrence Ruffin. But who's to say... We don't know. We haven't seen this Wesley next to whatever Terrence is going to bring. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you know, I, I I'm, a, I'm I'm a vertically challenged guy myself, but I have to admit, when you see someone that's that stature, six foot three, yeah, they look, they look that good with that wide shoulder span and the narrow waist and the full muscles and the grainy condition. It's just like it's so much. It's just overwhelming. Because of his shoulder width and the size of him, like I said, when I saw him at the 2019 Arnold Classic, I mean, his condition was off, and I think he was 10th place there. Mm. But he just looked like an open next to all these like little classic mm. guys. Do you know what I mean? It was like, he just looks, and he just, I was like, oh my God, when that guy gets in condition, he's going to be absolutely deadly. And I feel like now, I mean, even the last few years, he's been you know, improving the conditioning and stuff like that. But um, also at the end, can we speculate about um, Samson's next move with coaches? Can we talk about that at the end? Yeah, let's just uh, real quickly talk about the other three guys. We got Urs coming back. We got Brian 
Michael DeBool, they're all coming back again. Yeah. I, I wonder if the order is going to shuffle at all between them. I could I could see Breon. The more I've been looking at pictures of Breon, yeah, his legs are down a little bit. I can I definitely noticed that, but I still would have had him beating Urs, and I love Urs. I think he's a great Me kid. Too. Huge. Me too. We're we're both huge Urs Kalachinsky fans. We love the Miracle Bear. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's not a personal thing. I like Breon a lot too. I get along very well with him. We're both. I had him third. I had him third. Sorry, I had him third. Yeah, but well, that's I it. I mean, I, I could yeah. see it's a different judging panel. It's they could look a little different unless Urs dramatically fills out that upper body somehow. I don't I don't see how the judges might not do a little reversal there with Brianna and Urs this time. Yeah. Well, I think with those, like I said, when I saw the pictures last week, I, saw, I think I think that when he's showing his legs before the show, the day before the show, I think he looks to me like he's over dieted because mm. Urs has got those, like he's got those tiny little knees and he's got those crazy calves and the crazy, beautiful sweeping quads. And I was like, okay, his legs are absolutely shredded. But for me, where's that beautiful curve, that massive sweep on his thighs? I was thinking, well, maybe it's when he get on stage and it's the angle you're looking at. And I thought, but to me, it was saying he's over dieting, he's over, you know, he's coming. Because like I said, he says, he says, he says himself, I'm a conditioner, I love conditioning. And I respect that because you know me, I love conditioning and posing. Yeah. But um, I think, I th the thing is though, for us, it's really an easy fix. Because all he has to do is just come a little bit fuller yeah. Yeah. For, this, uh, for this Arnold UK. He just needs to, his coach will probably say, okay, then we, we, we came in too light and too flat for the Arnold America. So for the Arnold UK, we're just going to bring in a bit fuller. And the thing is, I mean, potentially, I mean, then, then it could be a real battle between him and uh, Ramon and uh, Wesley. Yeah, and he has the same coach, Stefan Kienzel, boss of Outlaw. Same coach as yeah. Wesley. So Good I don't coach. think uh, I don't think he's going to let Urs come in flat again. I think he's going to remedy that. Oh, um, 100%. And like I said, it's an easy fix. Um, there's a few guys, but the only last one I'm, I want to talk about is Michael DeBool because he was – condition came in, as always. He's very impressive. It's just – we have some better guys in the division. You know, he's a very consistent guy. He's a top five, top six guy at the Arnold and the Olympia now. He's established as a as a, an A-lister. So I wish him the best. Well, um, he won the Arnold UK twice. He was sixth in Olympia. Yeah. I mean, he's moving up, but um, he actually coached himself for this one. Oh, wow. And um, and he admitted that he missed the mark. I mean, the thing is, it's funny because if you look at his conditioning, if you saw him for the first time, you'd be like, oh, he's nailed yeah. it. <laughs> but unfortunately, when you've been bringing conditioning that is on a completely different level to everybody else, yeah. you're, I, I personally compare them and he will compare himself to how he looked before. So he wasn't off, but for him, he was off. Do you know what I mean? So it's yeah. unfortunate. So he's, I think he's going to, um, I think he knew what he needed to do. Because you know, when you're working with yourself and just your own body and stuff, and you're thinking, oh, you know, and, you know that you, you you got the prep goggles on. Maybe he thought he was really bone dry, and um, you know didn't have someone to be accountable. So, so maybe that's why some of these guys do need coaches. Do you know? You know. Yeah, I mean the coach. I, I really think the value, the greatest value of a coach is an objective second set of eyes. Because yeah, yeah, we've both competed. Anyone out there who's competed knows in the final stages, it's very hard to look in the mirror and see what's really there. Your mind plays tricks on you, either for mm -hmm. better or for worse. You can think you look better than you do. You think worse, and you'll make adjustments based on what you think is going on. It's not not what should be happening. But um, it's funny though, because I remember I was getting ready for my first show, and I showed somebody what I was looking like at six weeks out, and he goes, "Oh my god, you're ready!" And I just burst out <laughs> laughing. I says, "No, I am not ready. Yeah, 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 I said, I'm yeah. nowhere near ready." Because obviously, I've you know I'm experienced, and I knew you know I've been around in the media and stuff for years, so I knew I kind of knew what real conditioning was. But most people. You know, you'll be around the gym and go, oh, you're shredded, mate. You're looking right. amazing. And like, oh, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. Then. And, and in reality, yeah, no, you're not. They have no idea. They see an ab. They see a vein somewhere and they go, whoa, you're shredded. Oh, you're in condition. It's like, no, nah, not just maybe for the, you're lean, but you're not in stage condition. There's a big difference. Cool. So what, I'm sorry, what was the other topic that I rudely interrupted you with that you wanted to move on to? Oh, just to speculate on Samson's cash. It's just a bit of fun. I mean, what Samson's going to do now? Because obviously Marlene is uh, bringing him in, you know, for the for the old uh, sorry, old UK this weekend, yeah. which is which makes sense. You can't jump on with a coach like after you know with two weeks, you know, because it just doesn't work. Right. So, um, what do you what do you think he's going to do? Who do you think he's going to go with? Who would you recommend? I, I don't think there's a wrong coach for him. I think any any coach that clicks with him and they have a good rapport, uh, mm -hmm. someone that can understand him. It's funny how they think. Well. I hear stuff like, well, this coach is better for tall guys, and this one's better. Well, how ridiculous <laughs> is that? That's like saying, well, this coach no works, this work coach, coach works better with Asian bodybuilders. And this, I mean, come on. It sounds like there's a diff vast difference in human physiology based on these weird categorizations they like to throw people into. He's got blue like, eyes. Yeah, he's, a, he's a good coach for guys with blue eyes. Obviously, I'd love to see, you know, Hani would be great if, mm. 
if that was even possible. Hani's, he, would, think, he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't I think it. Hani's got his hands full right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. And he's not really a coach, is he, Hani? He's got those no. couple of guys. He's got his company, and he's not like, a coach. He he's a does great, this, he he's does. a great at coaching, but it's a it's a it's a hobby. It's a hobby for him because yeah, yeah. he loves it and he's very good at it. But does he need coaching? No, he does not need to be a coach. But, ever. but the thing is, I mean, I I don't want. I would. Do you know? What I would really hate to see. I would really hate to see like Samson burn through three or four coaches because mm. they just can't get it right. Do you know what I mean? I just. Um, I I mean. Yeah, I mean, what do you think about um, what what about what if he went to Q eight for like twelve weeks? Do you think that would work? Um, I mean, I've seen some people that they like Brandon doesn't necessarily get in the best condition. You know, if you're talking, if condition is the one factor, is there a co is there one or two coaches that are that much better at conditioning than everybody else? Like they've all had their hits and misses. So I, you know, Hani's the most consistent out of all. But after that, it's yeah. it's very hard to and, say that. And it's not. I mean, I've stayed at Samson's house. I've seen his life. You know, his daily life, and it's kind of. It's it's exactly how it needs to be. It's like you know he, he lives in an area with a little town in, in, in Essex, and you know he takes his dog for a walk. He's got a really kind of like that's why I knew when he got home a couple of days, I knew he was going to start feeling better because he, mm -hmm. you know, you go to America, you're like a superstar, you're getting pulled in all directions, people wanting photos, and it's just crazy and manic. Then you got to travel and fly back and compete, and all this dry out, and no wonder he, I knew he would feel exhausted. But like I've seen his like it, you know that kind of like the Dorian, the Ronnie. The kind of like the just the mundane, not mundane, but the kind of routine, the, you know, the kind of the, the distraction free, because yeah. that is what Q8 does. That's why people like oh, the anabolic chicken. And why were people saying that, you know, that uh, Q8 was so special? It's because there's no distraction. They just they're just doing what they're doing. It's just you know they come in and you know they, well, <laughs> you know, it's like everything is taken care of. You just got to train, eat, sleep. You know, get go back to your room or do your social media, do what you need to do for your sponsors. And it's kind of it's kind of monotonous, but it's it's just every day. But it's kind of distraction free. Work for Ruli. Nathan Diash in 2017, I think that was one of the best Nathan Diash's I've ever seen. I think he wasn't as good for a couple of years after that when he left Q8. Um, he just had a different look to his physique. And um, and it's, um, I, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I think really 12 weeks out there, I mean, I, 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 if they could do, I mean, they did it for Rami, they did it for Brandon, they did it for Nathan Diasha, they did it for, who else has been out there? Oh, Patrick, people. John, Patrick Johnson, you know, he did really well going out there for eight weeks, you know, even eight, know. even eight weeks, even 10, eight to 10 weeks. I just love to see it happen. What do you think? I don't know. I don't think he would do it. I don't think he wants to leave his home and his wife and his beautiful dog, Cerberus and all that. Uh, I, You know who I'd be interested to see him work with is Chad Nichols. I think Chad might be a. Yeah, because yeah, you're thinking about the 98 Ronnie thing. Aren't you? It's a good, and it'd be a good, it'd be a good story. It'd be a good story. Rami. Look what he did with Rami. Rami never won an Olympia. Sometimes I think we draw True. conclusions and they're not always causality True. doesn't equal whatever that statement is. But Rami never won the Olympia until he left a certain coaching situation and moved to Chad. True. That was the one thing that we always wanted. Rami didn't need any more size. Neither did Samson. He's done. Mm -hmm. He just needs condition. If Chad could be the one to really get that last 5 to 10% condition that we've been waiting and waiting to see on Samson – Maybe that'd be that'd be a sight to see. I'd love to see that. Let's let's look at what Sean Roden and Rami had to do to win the Olympia. Okay, they had to come in lighter. Yep, they had to come in sharper. Um, and that's I mean, Sean Roden was two thirty eight when he won the Olympia in twenty eighteen. Yep. Rami, what came down to about two ninety? You know, yep. from three oh five, he was he was competing around about three three oh five, sometimes heavier. Yep. So he had to lose like 15 pounds to get rid of it. But you know what? I, <laughs> the more I think about it, the more I think it would be exciting. See, if I was the Olympia organizers, yeah, like the, the narratives and the, and the storylines that could be created, if you had Derek and Hadi, you know, knowing that Hadi's now coming in a lot more confident and probably, you know, because it was very close last year, you know that, that Hadi's going to be in better condition than he was last year. So you've got that, you've got that sort of battle going on. Mm. Imagine if, like, say, Brandon and Samson became roommates and training partners in Q8 for 12 <laughs> weeks. You've got, you've got a guy who's still in the top four. Yeah. He's won the Olympia. Yeah. You know, he's been second twice. You know, he can't, and it, um, he got sick and everything. <laughs> you know, he's with the stomach thing. So he still managed to hold on to fourth place. So could you imagine? Could you imagine the videos of seeing Derek and Hadi, both Evergen athletes, training together and whatever and all that? And then if you had Brandon and Sam, <laughs> can you imagine? Can you imagine how excited? Then you'd have a returning Andrew Jack, you'd have Chris, Ooh. potentially Rubiel, Nick Walker coming back after his hamstring tear. Like, because I, like you know, I, 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 I laugh about it. Like, I'm not a Nick Walker fan. I just, I just, yeah, I just, I'm not a fan. But do you know what? You can't, you can't count that guy out. He's so freaking fierce. He's yeah. an animal.
and he's going to be coming in to win. He's not coming in to make top three, you know. So that those sort of things, you know, would make for a very, very exciting Olympia. All right. Well, uh, uh, by there, if you're listening, why don't you reach out to Samson? Let's see if we can get this going. Oh, yeah, imagine, uh, imagine the training videos of Brandon and Samson training together, like really. Really, kind of a because Brandon's the kind of guy that he wouldn't he wouldn't be sort of rooting against Samson because he's kind of a cool guy, you know. So I yeah. think he he knows that maybe Samson is a little bit ahead of him. Do you know what I mean? But I think yeah. I think I feel like they'd be supportive. I feel like it would be. I mean, imagine the YouTube videos and the day in the life of seeing those two as roommates out in Kuwait and knowing that these two are going to come in at you know their all time best potentially at the uh, at the Olympia. I think it'd be amazing, mate. Oh, it's just it, I could just it, get shivers thinking about it. If it does happen, I'm going to make sure that uh, at some point we post. We post a clip of this to remind people that you can do it. <laughs> yeah. It was all Giles' idea. So. Yeah. I mean, I would follow that YouTube series. I mean, imagine watching those two YouTube series of those two, you know, the, those two, two guys, you know? Yeah. I mean, come on. That's just, that's just, yeah, that's just a dream come true. I'd watch those videos. Well, last thing we want to talk about, uh, this is a, a gentleman named Eddie Abu, Abu, who was a great <laughs> UK bodybuilder back in the mid-90s to the mid-early 2000s. Correct. Uh, one of the top guys, enormous. And he's sort of had a second life uh, as a influencer, uh, somebody on on Instagram, on YouTube. He has a huge following on both of those platforms. Uh, main focus seems to be nutrition. And man, I, I'm becoming a fan. I know you're already a fan. He's really cut through a lot of the BS, and he's, he's waking up a lot of people to the realities of what they're putting in their mouths and the effects it has on their bodies. Wake the fuck um, up. <laughs> Yeah, he's very, very direct and very blunt. Almost sounds angry at times, but you have to be though. You have to yeah. be. I mean, like I honestly, I feel like somebody needed you needed someone like an Eddie Abu to drop an atom bomb into what is basically the majority of the public's like like nutritional and also the way that the healthcare is going, the way we've gone from one in six people having cancer to one in two and obesity on the rise. Why do you think that is? Someone like Eddie Abu comes in, like I mean, I said to him many, I messaged him a few times, I said, mate, you need to get a cake. Huh? Well, you know, let the people know. I want to. I should interject that he's not just a retired pro bodybuilder. He is a registered nurse. Yeah. So he has psychiatric nurse. Yeah. Yeah. So he does was obstetrics. Is that what he does? It was a psychiatric nurse. Yeah. Psychiatric. He was on a, you know, psychiatric wards. He was working with you know okay. lots of different. Yeah. Yeah. So he has a medical background. He's not just yeah. spouting off uh, out of pulling things out of his butt. He's as a smart guy. He's a very smart guy. You know. And um, is it just Eddie Abu on Instagram? If you guys are on on YouTube, check him out because. Yeah. He's got some revelations about things that we eat on an everyday basis. He's very, you know, he hates energy drinks. He hates pre workout Oh, this is shit. This is shit. <laughs> and do you know what? Because he rang me a few weeks ago. Rang me a few, because I actually messaged him because he was going up 100,000 followers a day. Wow. He went from 2 million crap. to 3 million in the space of like 10 days. And, and, he's, and also, uh, Boris Johnson, our ex prime minister, wrote about him in his column. What? Yeah, the newspaper column. So he's quoting like, and Boris Johnson's jumping on the Eddie Abu bandwagon now. Oh, wow. So um, I messaged Eddie like privately because I've got his number. I had him on Global a couple of years ago, and I said, Look, Eddie, I said, just to let you know, mate. Um, just in case any of the media see the the Global Muscle or any interviews or anything I've done with you, you know, mate, I've got your back because I I really respect what you're doing, and I'm all all the way behind you. I said, if mm -hmm. they come to me, I'll tell them to I'll tell them where to go. You know, I'll tell them where to go because I don't want. You know, because you know, you you'll get people like um, you know, people who kind of raise rising fame, and then the next thing you know, there's somebody, some put, put woman that claims they slept with them and had a romp with them. It's on the front of the newspapers. It's that's what British tabloids. They're bullshit. You know, yeah. that's another thing Eddie Bush should go after. And also, I think Eddie Bush should go after motorway service stations because it's all junk food shit. Really? So, but um, anyway, so he rang me. He rang me, and he said, he said, look, Charles. He says, I I, I realize he said I might get run over tomorrow. Because he mm -hmm. said I'm I'm making myself a target. He says, but I don't give a shit, mate. He says I'm I'm seeing people like you know. They're coming up to me in the street, you know, saying about how their health has improved. Because, like I always said, like I've obviously been diabetic, I and mean, I hate sugar. It's like the devil for me, you know. Yeah. But I would say, like, you know, imagine, imagine if you could wave a magic wand and just halve the sugar intake of the of everyone on this planet. I mean, like our NHS, our National Health Service, are completely collapsing at the moment. It has been mm. for the last couple of years. I mean, it's wow. it's really like what was it fourteen months before I even saw a cardiologist after I'd had heart surgery. Jeez. You know, it's just ridiculous. I was in there like 20 minutes, you know? So, and I mean, I, 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 like when I'm in supermarkets, like I go after, I go at the gym, after the gym, like, because right next to the gym, I go late at night, I go about half, probably after 10 o'clock at night and there's nobody in there. And sometimes if I actually have to go in the day, I get anxiety because I start staring at people's trolleys, seeing the mm. shit that people buy and you just, 
And these are the same people that you then see at the doctors and the hospital and, yeah. you know, the fat parents of fat children. And you just think no one, and no one's really happy like that. You know what I mean? And no, they will have health issues. And if you think about how, um, counts that one in six to one in two, uh, what is the biggest change? Like people don't really cook food anymore. We right. eat so much processed food. There's so much sugar in everything, you know? And, um, I mean, now I've, I've made some, po- I made some changes. I eat carbs once a day. I have one sweet potato a day and a little bit of fruit. That's the only carbs I have in a day. I mean, I'm diabetic, so I have to, you know, but it's, it's made my blood sugar a lot easier to, to cope with. I've upped my natural fats. Um, and, um, and I find that, um, you know, I've made some sort of like very subtle changes that probably it was a few weeks before I'd even noticed I'd made them, like not eating many protein bars and stuff like that. And it's all the boo, you know, but I don't agree with everything he says. Like the first meal at 4.30 and some of the, some of the weird foods he cooks, I and mean, I couldn't eat that. But, um, but what he's getting about eats about people, the way that people eat and the way that people live, he is onto something. And he yeah. literally, he can't be bored. He's one of these guys. He's doing if he's actually if you actually look at how many members he's got on his um Eddie Abu crew thing and it's like 25 pounds a month, he's doing all right. You yeah. know, he's he's not doing this for the money. So and he's doing something that he's doing that he's got Eddie Abu show, the Ethin Eddie Abu show on YouTube. <laughs> he's doing he's doing it with his daughter because she's a chef and yeah. she's been doing she was the one who I think encouraged him to do all these videos at the start. Hmm. And she does all the social media and she does all the editing and all the you know, putting the subtitles on and stuff. So I think he's I think he's just on a roll. He's just buzzing. And I just I'm I'm completely behind him. And I love the guy. And it yeah. actually, um, I think he's coming to see Ronnie next week, uh, one oh. of the venues. Yeah, he said, he said, I said, you're going to come and see Ronnie, man? I said, I'd love to see you. And he said, well, remind me close to the time. He said, because my, my schedule is so busy at the moment. He says, but mm. if I can, because I know, because Kevin Hawke's coming to one of them. Yeah. Charles Claremont's coming to one of them. So I'm hoping we can all get together because we're going to go out for a meal afterwards. So I'll be a nice little group photo. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll show yeah. on the Paro next, uh, in a couple of weeks. That'd be a, that'd be a bunch of legends at one table, like right there. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, let's wrap it up. I'm not sure what we're doing for coverage of the Arnold UK because I don't know if there's a live stream. I'm hearing well, there is, there's going to be one. Well, I'm I, hearing I, the- I know. I messaged them about commentary. They didn't even respond. Hmm. Yeah, so maybe that's why. So if you said Saturday and Sunday, I'm pretty sure it's Friday and Saturday, the, the, bot, the pro Friday body. and Saturday, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm yeah, not going yeah. Friday. I'm going Saturday morning. Okay. Me and Lauren are going Saturday morning because we booked the hotel for Saturday and Sunday because – for me to go Friday and Saturday, what was I going to do for the Sunday? Because I got to pick Ronnie up on Monday morning. Mm, so I mm. thought I'll just hang around on the Sunday, go around the expo, and then obviously I've got to uh, pick up Ronnie on Monday morning. But, yeah, because uh, you're not that close to Birmingham, are you? Uh, it's about three hours. Three hours? I mean, it's not too close. Right. Right. Yeah, Birmingham. It's still the only place I've been to in the UK is Birmingham. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2010. Yeah. That's, 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 how I, uh, that's how I know your nation is that one city. But uh, yeah, no. I think I partied a bit too hard on that trip. Eh, we both we both had our fun there. But anyway, <laughs> now it's done. I'm gonna die. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see, guys. If there is a live stream and it's, it's if it's a free live stream, we'll do a watch party. Uh, otherwise, we'll do wrap ups. But like I said, I wish I could be more definitive in what I'm telling you right now about our coverage. Mm. But I'm still. I wish that website was a little more updated and there was a little more information going on. There. What are you gonna do, yeah. Ron? Just one thing. Last thing I'd like to talk about. You know me. You and me are like heavy metal fans. Yeah. Sure. Well, I was, I was, I thought I'd do something smart and strategic last weekend. Lauren uh, took me to a Jason Derulo concert. Oh no! And I was like, "Yeah, I can't wait, darling, can't wait." Mm. I was, re- and, the, and I got there, and I was like, I was just surrounded by all these like teenage girls and stuff, and I was just at the back, and I'm sat there, in, like stood there in my suit and my jeans and stuff. And I was thinking, this is, I was like a proper fish out of water. Oof. I mean, I've never seen so many filled lips in my life as well. It was just <laughs> like, and, and I mean, I was like, okay, I feel like I feel like I should not be here, yeah. mate. It was fantastic. What? It okay. was incredible. I didn't realize how many of the songs I knew were his because I've actually got two of his songs on my iPod. Okay. They, it was amazing. I, I, it was like Michael Jackson level dancing production. Okay. I mean, like it took me a little while to tune into it, but my God, that was one of the best nights ever. The thing is, also, I'm glad I enjoyed it, but even if I hadn't, it means now I've got one in the bag because going back to the same arena, the first direct arena in Leeds in December, Slipknot are coming. Oh, I thought you were going to say Five Finger Death Punch, but I well, I mean, well, yeah, obviously, I mean, Five Finger, obviously, I mean, yeah, we, we, yeah, if they come to Europe again, I'm definitely going to see them. But yeah, Slipknot are going to come. But the tickets are so expensive. Yeah, Slipknot's got a new drummer because their, their drummer passed away a couple of years ago. Right. And uh, they have the, they think, they haven't announced it, but they think it's going to be the, the drummer from, uh, the I think they're from Brazil, Sepultura. 
Oh, wow. Fantastic. He, he quit and didn't give any reason or anything. So a lot of people think he's going to be the new drummer. And they're oh, waiting yeah. to see what the new mask is going to be. Yeah, so cool. yeah. I can't wait. Because I've, I've seen Five Finger Death Punch. I've seen Metallica. I've seen, both seen yeah. them twice. I've seen uh, Corrosion of Conformity. Um, I'd love to see them. Different, yeah, different. I'm uh, trying to forget, uh, remember who else I've seen. Um, but um, yeah, I heard, I mean, Slipknot, the live albums for me, are the best ones I like to train to. In fact, I mean, there's a track actually not on any of their albums I've seen, but it's on a, on a Freddy versus Jason album, uh, film oh. compilation album. Oh, no. it's, called, it's called Snap. Yeah, and I'm looking at it. Slip not snap that if that doesn't get you psyched up your main <laughs> set. Like when I do my main, because my training has gone, inc- gone absolutely incredible the last four or five weeks. I've, I've been hitting PBs in the gym, you know, like I mean, just crazy. And I'm, I'm not taking any gear, nothing, just a little bit of a uh, tiny little bit of test and bit of creatine. That's it. And my training has gone to like through the roof the last few weeks. I'm really buzzing at the moment. But that one, me- when I do that one main heavy set, snap by <laughs> slip not. Guys, you can thank me later. Well, uh, if sure. if that's not good enough for you guys, try before I forget. That is my Slipknot. Yeah, yeah. Live, live. Uh, no, I like the regular version. Oh. Uh, also like their version of Master of Puppets. They do a pretty good cover of Master of really? Puppets. Really? Yeah, you haven't heard that? Check that I, out. Oh, shit. That's, that's right up my street. Yeah. And I love the Metallica version. I didn't think any... I would think anybody who attempts to cover Master of Puppets is going to... I would say, Stone, what are you thinking? No, no, no. I said, you've seen that thing on Instagram with the little kids. Yes. Yes. You know, you're thinking, what is this? And it's like, Mm. wow. Yeah, the kids always always surprise me with covers. Anyway, guys, that is the end of Power Hour Episode 2. So glad to have this show back with Giles Tiger Thomas. Uh, It was the brainchild of Jen Gerisi. She said, you guys should do a show. We'll call it. I think she came up with the title, too, Power Hour. I think. for Tiger Hour. Tiger Hour. I mean, it beats Tiger and Ronster or Ronster and Tiger. Tiger Power. Tiger uh, Power. And, and in little tiny little Andron. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I have no idea. You know, I'm just no, happy to have the show. It's but, your uh, channel, though. It's your channel. No, it's, I'm, I couldn't do this without you. So, guys, uh, please sub- subscribe, like, share, turn on notifications, do all that. Try and really grow this channel and bring a lot of really great content to it. Can do that with more support from you guys. Appreciate you all watching. Appreciate Giles Tiger Thomas every week. If you have any comments, Good, bad, neutral, leave them below there. We love to hear the feedback. We love to argue with you guys, debate, d- discuss. It's all good, guys. So let's let's keep it going. Appreciate you watching. And we'll see you right here next time on Power Hour.